G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It is all guns are blazing. As you can see, there's videos coming out left, right, and center on the channel at the moment, uh, which is great, which can only mean one thing. The footy season has arrived, and as such, it's time to finalize some predictions. Obviously, we've done a season preview podcast. Uh, we've done uh, the round one predictions. I've given you my ladder prediction as well. But one thing I haven't done yet is discuss the All-Australian team. So in today's video, I'm going to have a crack at predicting the upcoming All-Australian team at the end of the year, which is ludicrously difficult obviously there's so many variables um, such as injury and availability of players and stuff like that and projecting which players will do well and which won't is an incredibly hard task but I thought it'd be a bit of fun to knock together my 22 for the upcoming season so the format of the video will be I simply take you through my six defenders my six midfielders including the Ruckman the six forwards and then four on the bench I'm also going to hedge my bets a little bit and throw out a few players that uh, might be in my reserves. You know, if, they, if the main 22 get injured, um, those are the players that I'll call on as a bit of a backup. But for now, I'm going to predict the 22 best players in the competition this year for each position. Again, this is always just my opinion, guys. And uh, there's so many factors that go into it um, that I'm certainly not going to get it right. But that doesn't mean I don't want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments as we go along uh, what you agree with and what you disagree with. Before we crack into the video, guys, as well, I just want to uh, thank you all for all the support lately. Uh, things are going really well on the channel. I do have an audacious goal of hitting 20,000 subscribers before I jet off to America in early mid-April as well, guys. So you, the way you can help me with that is if you haven't subscribed by hitting subscribe, that would be very, very helpful. It does say about 42% of the people who uh, have been watching my videos over the last month haven't actually subscribed. So that's a fair chunk of you. And if you do enjoy the content, it would mean a lot if you just hit subscribe. It takes two seconds, it's free, but it would help me very much in terms of the algorithm. All right, so let's crack into the team, guys. I'll take you through my six defenders, and uh, I've gone with a very tall back line, but that's because I think a lot of the best players uh, that are defenders around the league are going to be tall this year. Uh, but I've opted for three genuine key defenders, and then a couple of guys who are kind of like a tall intercept marking player, but not quite key defenders technically, uh, and then a more of a running defender. So in terms of the, the balance of the 22, like any all Australian team, it's going to be difficult. But I have done my best to not just shove midfielders onto flanks, although it's hard to project because we don't know where they're going to play yet. But anyway, I'm going to give you my three key defenders. I've gone Jacob Wiedering to win. Uh, I think it'll be his first All-Australian jumper as uh, the, the fullback in that position. The other key defender is Stephen May, um, who I think has gone back-to-back -back as uh, key or fullback or centre-half back in the All-Australian team the last couple of years. So he will uh, make it three from three, and I think Melbourne will have a great season. And then the third spot, as a third tall, even though he would never actually play as a third tall, I'm going my boy Tom Barras. I'm backing him in. I think he finished the season so well last year. Understandably, didn't get All-Australian because it probably wasn't a, a full season's performance, but I'm backing him in to do it this year and take that third key back spot. Then, if that wasn't enough height, I'm, uh, I'm going to have Tom Stewart as an absolute um, walk-up start to this All-Australian team. I don't need to say how good Tom Stewart is. He's made like something like four of the last five All-Australian defenses. If It might not even be like all of them, uh, but he's an absolute gun and he's 190 centimeters, but uh, he can play tall and small. Kind of, that's the way I'm, I'm fitting him into my side. Um, but if that wasn't tall enough for you, Nick Blakey, he's my outlier. He's my random pick for this year's All-Australian. I think he showed some really good signs last year as a tall, really fast, really dashing defender. And uh, even though he's 196 centimeters, it adds a bit of a different um, mix of attributes to this back six. So I'm backing him in to have an absolute breakout year for the Swans. And then in my final spot, I'm going to go Nick Dacos. I'm going to back the kid in. Yes, he will get some more attention this year and he might play some more midfield, but I think he might have a Sam Walsh kind of trajectory and he will get um, highlighted for being one of the more damaging, effective running defenders in the league. I don't think that's actually beyond him this year, so I'll back it in as my rough call. Then let's talk about the midfield. I'll start off with the Ruckman. Uh, I'm only going to pick one Ruckman in this uh, side. It is a little bit hard um, to pick two, um, and I'm umming and ahhing about that one. I will tell you who the second Ruck would be in my reserve section, but we'll start off. Max Gorn will once again win all Australian duties. The only thing preventing that will be injury, touch wood, um, but he's the best Ruck in the game, so he is a walk-up start to this side. And now let's go through the midfielders, and this one's tough, and this is the part of the ground where all of these players are walk-up starts in theory, but injury will have its uh, impact, and you know it only takes four or five games missed to not get an All-Australian jumper. But if we're picking on pure quality, 
Clayton Oliver will be a walk-up start to this side. Lockie Neal will also, um, you know, be one of the best midfielders in the competition. Patrick Cripps, I'm backing him in to double up on, um, you know, a fantastic year last year. Hopefully he strings a couple of great seasons together. Connor Rosie, I think, is on a massive upward trajectory to being one of the best young midfielders in the competition. And uh, while he could get picked as a forward, I'm picking him as a midfielder. I think that's where he, well, I expect that's where he play a lot of his football this year. And then Bonds and Pelly, again, another player I'm projecting to bounce back into the All-Australian side after a sort of average year last year. We know on his day, in my opinion at least, he's one of the best players in the competition. So with their new forward mix, I think he'll play a bit more midfield this year. At least that's what I'm forecasting. And he'll get picked as a midfielder. So barring injury, I think that is who I would pick for my All-Australian midfield. Now we're up to the forwards, and I've gone a similar format for my forward line as I have for the back line, and I've picked three genuine tours. So the key forwards that I've picked in this side is Jeremy Cameron, the guy that I've picked to win the common medal, um, and therefore, I know the common medal doesn't always make all Australian, but I think, you know, he's probably the best key forward in the game. Uh, Charlie Kuno will back up a fantastic year last year. The only thing stopping this guy making this side, in my opinion, is injury. Touch wood, again, it's possible. Um, but the other third tall forward I'm going with is Tom Lidge from Richmond, who I think he came second in the Coleman last year. Quietly had a, a very good season. I'm expecting Richmond to be a better side this year as well. So he's going to get uh, even more opportunity, you'd think, better supply from the midfield that Richmond have. And uh, therefore, I think he will take my third All-Australian spot. Then we've got the three non-talls. And thankfully, I've picked a bit of a better balance here uh, than I did for the defenders, which was an absolute land of the Giants. Uh, for the first one, I am going to pick a midfielder who plays a bit forward, and that's Petrarca. Uh, I think he is probably my favorite, or uh, as far as I'm concerned, the best player in the competition on ability at the moment. Bont could take that from him. But regardless, I can't make a video the other day about Petrarca being the best player in the competition and not back it up by having him in my All-Australian side. So, He's a walk-up start for me. The other one I'm backing to get back into this side is Toby Green. Uh, obviously, only played 15 games last year. I forgot as well. He got suspended for like the first five rounds of last year. Still kicked 37 goals for the year. And in my opinion, is one of the most talented players in the competition. So uh, he is a walk-up start again if he plays 22 games in GWS have a reasonable year, but I think even if they don't have a reasonable year, he's good enough to make the All-Australian side. And the third player is Charlie Cameron, who I expect, uh, I think he kicked like 52 goals last year as well, so he was unlucky not to be considered for the All-Australian side as it was, and uh, I think he is probably probably the best small forward of his style we have in the league, um, to be honest, in terms of you know that raw pressure and speed. Fantastic defensive player as well. And uh, I'm backing Brisbane to have a good year, and therefore Charlie Cameron will kick enough goals to take that All-Australian spot back. So now we are on to the All-Australian bench, guys, and the format for this will be one defender, two midfielders, because I want to jam some midfielders in there, and a forward. So I haven't gone the second ruck. The defender I'm picking is, again, on the taller side, but uh, I think he might be the shortest defender I've picked so far. James Sicily will come in and uh, establish himself as an All-Australian quality defender. He had a great year last year as well, and you know, on his day, uh, I think he's like the best intercept and rebound player in the competition or something like that. I forget the exact stat, but we know how good James Sicily is, and uh, I know that I've got Hawthorne winning a spoon this year, but that just means he'll see plenty of the footy. I've gone with two gun young midfielders in Sam Walsh and Andrew Brayshaw uh, to win their All-Australian bench spots as midfielders, uh, Brayshaw and Walsh. I think both are just consistently gun footballers who it's hard to imagine having an off year. And I did probably say the same thing about Patrick Cripps once upon a time, but I don't know if those guys rely on their ability to, you know, bullet through contests as much as Cripps did as well. So I think these guys are on an upward trajectory as good as they already are. They're my All-Australian midfielders. And for the final bench spot as a forward, I'm backing in to get his first All-Australian jumper, and that's Bailey Fritsch. And he was unlucky not to get it in 2021 when they won the flag, and he kicked something like 60-odd goals as that third tall lead-up forward, but he's a pure forward as well, uh, which I favor over just picking another midfielder who can play forward. There's some really unlucky players to miss out, but I think Bailey Fritsch is good enough to win his first All-Australian jumper this year, and I'm going to have him sliding in to my final forward spot. Now, I've just got a uh, list of five players of my unlucky ones that I'm going to have as a bit of a reserve in case some of the other guys get injured. Um, Blitzarves, I just couldn't make room for. Again, he's a fantastic player, um, but maybe he just has an off here. I don't know. I just didn't fit him in. Took Miller, I've done dirty. I couldn't fit him into this side. I just think that I couldn't leave out Sam Walsh, uh, who I'm backing in to have a great year. And the same thing with Brayshaw as well. I think uh, these guys are on the way up. Took Miller could still win the Brownlow. 
I'm not too sure. Again, we're splitting hairs here between very, very good midfielders. I've also left out Callum Mills, who was an All-Australian last year. Could prove me completely wrong. Heaney was my next forward into the side. Um, I just think maybe Sydney don't quite have the same year that they did last year. And I think Melbourne will, as I said, I predicted them to win the flag. So maybe Fritch sees a bit more of the footy down his way than Heaney does. Again, splitting hairs. For anyone curious, Sean Darcy would be the next Ruckman I have in. Um, he's a fantastic, probably an understated player. Um, if you don't watch a lot of Fremantle games, you probably don't realize how good this guy is. I'm backing him into almost having all Australian quarter of the year, but uh, I ended up not picking the second ruck. But if I did pick one, it would be Sean Darcy. Anyway, guys, that is all I've got for you for my predicted all Australian slide. It's just a bit of fun. Obviously, there's no chance of getting this right. But let me know in the comments what you thought of my uh, opinions and what you would do differently. Again, we are splitting hairs here between some fantastic players. Um, but it'll be interesting to watch over the course of the season and injuries will play a part. There'll be some breakout players that you don't expect. Some of these players will probably have a really poor year um, by their usual expectation as well. So as always, I look forward to your feedback in the comments. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.